Today I'm drinking coffee because it's early as fuck. So no wine for me today. I think I started dating again probably a year, maybe a little bit over a year after my car accident. I also was in a super toxic relationship still when my car accident happened. So I was just kind of healing from that as well as healing from my car accident. But if I could suggest anything to any kind of wheelchair users, if you are like newly injured, I highly, highly, highly suggest waiting until you get to a certain amount of independence before you do start dating just because I feel like you don't want to be having accidents and going through the motions of the beginning stages of your injury with a new person because honestly it'll probably scare them off into thinking that that's what your life's going to be like moving forward when it's clearly not you're in the first year of your injury you're going to date a lot of losers. Like there is going to be a lot, a lot of guys that you're going to go through the motions with and be like, nope, it doesn't work. It's not going to work. And don't think that there's anything wrong with you. Like that is very normal for most people to date a lot, like to date and date and keep dating and to keep trying first dates and second dates and third dates. That's extremely normal and don't think that there's anything wrong with you when it comes to being a wheelchair user and dating you're gonna have people that are gonna think that you're looking for a caretaker you're gonna have people that are thinking that you're looking for somebody that is gonna take care of you for the rest of your life and maybe you are maybe that is what you're looking for but for me personally it's just not what i'm looking for and i've noticed that a lot of people will kind of get deterred from that thinking that that's what i'm looking for But if that's what they assume, that's not your person. That is not your person. Somebody that doesn't want to stick up for you and be there for you and support you, that is not your person. Because I'm sorry, but for me personally, like in sickness and in health, and had my car accident not happened in 2020, had it happened later on in life after I got married and my person left me, I would be devastated. Like you're supposed to be with that person no matter what. And so that's the way that I see it. So I have encountered guys that have made my disability a problem and have said that my disability wasn't a problem. We first started dating and then it became a problem. And to be honest with you, those people just aren't for me and it sucks. And it's definitely disappointed me in the past with one person specifically. It was extremely disappointing, but it's not that person's just not meant for you and i promise you there are people out there that are meant for you and that you that are willing to wait for because settling with somebody that's half ass like that is not worth your time dating is really awkward in a wheelchair because obviously it brings like all new questions to the table if a guy is like asking you about sex right off rip by the way just move on like if you're not already just move on because that is that is not a question that they should be asking you within the first conversation of talking to you if they're asking that to you while you're still talking on the dating app swerve you need to go to the next one because that is a waste of time I always give bonus points to guys if they can find a wheelchair accessible date that's always a plus that's always a bonus if you can do that if a guy goes out of his way to find somewhere that is wheelchair accessible, that is a big green flag to me. And yeah, you're going to have guys that aren't going to understand your disability. You're going to have guys that like are not going to understand the fact that you cannot stand up and you cannot walk and you cannot do certain things. And that's okay. Don't, don't let their stupidity and their misinformation upset you or feel like you're different or feel like you're unworthy or unlovable because your disability has nothing to do with the love that you can give and the love that you're able to receive. So don't let anybody make you feel indifferent for having a disability while dating. A lot of people in my life definitely commended me for dating again after everything that I had been through. It was kind of a shock to people like why I would want to date after everything I've been through. And I wanted to date because I needed to move on with my life. Eventually, I think you just get to the point where it's like, okay, yeah, I've been really fucked over in the past and yeah, I've been through a lot of shit, but like that doesn't define who I am and I just need to move on and find somebody 
that is willing to look past everything I've been through, willing to look past the baggage that I might have. So I actually have a story for you guys. Probably the worst dating experience, like injury wise that I had was with the first guy that I did start dating after my car accident. This was the first guy that I went on more than three or four dates with. And so it was probably like our fourth or fifth date at this point, and I was allowing him to stay at my house. We were going to be drinking, so I was like, you can stay the night, and this was the first night he was going to be staying with me, so obviously we're probably going to have sex, and we, I don't exactly remember how the conversation got started, but we were outside smoking a cigarette, and he was basically like, can you talk about anything except for your injury, which was very offensive. And especially because I was only a year and a half out from my injury at this point. So it was like, of course, that's all I feel comfortable talking about because that's kind of like all that my life is surrounded by right now. And on top of that, I had been in an abusive relationship. So it's really hard for me to open up to new guys. It's hard for me to talk about like who I am as a person and to like really like open myself up to guys. So when I did first start dating, that's all I would really talk about was my injury because that was the only thing that I felt comfortable talking about. I didn't feel comfortable talking about who I was as a person because I truthfully did not want to date at that point. I wasn't ready to be in a relationship at that point. So I was keeping my guard up. And unfortunately that pushed me to only talk about my injury, which is something that he didn't like. And so he realized after the fact that it was like an asshole move, what he said, but he did say, you know, I'm not trying to sound like an asshole. I'm just trying to get to know you, which you know, hurt me even more. So it just wasn't good. Um, didn't go well. Definitely stopped talking to him shortly after that. I think we went on one more date after that. And then I stopped talking to him because I was just like, you're not my person. If you can't realize that, like, I just ra- I just crashed my car a year and a half ago. And this is, yeah, this is probably what I'm going to be talking about mostly then you're not my person. And if anybody does that to you, they're not your person either. Sticking around and waiting for the right person to come in your life is 1000% worth it. I know I haven't found my person and I know I'm not with my person yet, but I know that he's somewhere out there in this world just waiting for me to be ready for him. And I'm not going to be ready for him if I keep settling for these fucking losers. So don't settle. There are amazing guys out there. There are guys out there that are willing to treat you like absolute fucking gold. So don't settle for shitty ass men that want to treat you like fucking dirt in the ground. You're going to have to date somebody that is like willing to grow with you because your disability is going to change over time. You at one and a half years injured is going to be completely different than you at five years injured, which is going to be completely different from 10 years injured and 20 years injured and so on and so forth. Like you're going to be completely different versions of yourself, not just because you're growing older as a person and everybody changes with time, but your disability is going to change with time. So that's something that you have to prepare yourself for on your own so that you can prepare your partner for that and the right person and the right person will be able to handle anything that's going to entail with that when it comes to safety i i know this sounds really fucking stupid but i think that god has put me enough in my life put me through enough i don't have like any fears of being like abducted or anything like that of being taken advantage of I know that's kind of silly to say because I am a wheelchair user, but I truthfully believe that I've been through a lot in this lifetime and I don't think that God has that in my plan. I know that sounds crazy, but I just don't feel like that's that's something I've, I've never been afraid of it. I've never been afraid of that. Uh, even before I was injured, I was never afraid of that because I've always been a very strong, resilient person and I've always held my own. So I feel like that's just not in God's plan for me. I don't know how else to explain it, but when it comes to safety, if I was to be a little bit more precautious, um, I definitely think that I would actually never mind, guys. I have been safe. Okay. I 
typically do not go on a first date, like unless it's in a public place. That's always my rule. Like first date always has to be like at Starbucks or at a restaurant or something of the sort. And then I always have my location shared with at least three of my friends. So three of my friends always have my location shared. And I always tell at least two of my friends that I'm going on a date, when I'm going on a date, where we're going and who I'm going on a date with. I always do that with two of my friends. I always am very informative because that is safety. Um, So I take everything I just said back. I am safe. Um, But I still don't think that that's in God's plan for me. I think that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. I love you guys. I hope you guys have a great day, night, whenever you're watching this. Bye.